Hey, what's good, y'all? This is another evening with Ethan, and we're getting in some more Ridley practice, so... We're gonna be out here super smashing some bros, and I'm gonna find some shit to talk about, because... I couldn't really think of a topic <laughs> um, when I was getting ready to record this. Uh, I don't know what happened to my brain cells. Maybe they were too distracted by focusing on my legendary dragon powers, but here we are. I'm about to beat the shit out of this wolf. So, the topic for today is going to be gay, because, again, I couldn't really think of one. <laughs> um, so I'm basically just going to talk about gay shit um, while I also talk about this matchup. And I will say that Wolf is very satanic. I've said this many times about many characters. It, it seems like every time I play this game, I'm talking about how satanic someone is. But Wolf is just very good at killing Ridley. And, in fact, I really want to do, like, a Dante's Inferno-style mural. <laughs> of all of the satanic Ridley matchups. Um, and the level that Wolf is at, the level of Hell, is right above the level where Ness, the Prince of Hell, exists. Because Ness 100% is an apex predator that is just designed to kill fucking dragons. But we'll talk about that more later. Anyway, I'm beating the shit out of this furry fuck because <coughs> I'm good at this game a little bit. <laughs> and also, I just know this matchup better than this person. I'm pretty sure this person has played against Ridley's before, and they're just used to rolling their fucking face on the controller and short hopping and attacking like a million times in the air and Ridley just not being able to do anything. But luckily, I'm pretty good at moving against Wolf. You'll notice that, like, I try to avoid standing in the same place unless I absolutely have to. Um like that, <laughs> basically. But I try to like keep a lot of momentum and keep on him and then constantly keep moving so that he doesn't have time to basically just harass me till he can get through my shield. Also, I will say this wolf player is not particularly talented. Um, I mean, he's better than most people who play this game, obviously, but it um, seems like he just does not adapt to what's going on in the match too much because he could very easily just beat the shit out of me. But anyway, that's enough Super Smash talk. Um, I'm here to get less on super smashing and more on the bros right now so uh, i actually uh hung out with this homosexual like uh two three days ago i don't even remember time really flies and um he was actually really cute and he was very nice he was at heb which is a local grocery store and you know i messaged him on grinder and he responded and i was like what the hell that never happens and um basically we met up like a few minutes later and um, just talked and did our thing, which was pretty cool. Um, I guess I could tell you a little bit about him. He was pretty cute. He, uh, let's see, let me see if I remember. We talked a good bit. So he actually was born in the Rio Grande Valley. He was like in the McAllen area, I'm pretty sure. And then he moved to Mexico for a while. And then he moved back to the U.S., um, where he is now, and recently moved to San Antonio, where I live, um, within the past three days. And I don't know what it is, but it's like, whenever guys are really into me, um, the guys who are into me usually have a little bit... I don't want to say he had trouble speaking English, because his English was, like, solid, but... They just, we just couldn't, have I ever talked about Mateo on here? We'll talk about that in a little bit. Anyway, TLDR, um, a lot of the people who are interested in me um, are ESL, and it's not just that they speak Spanish, like, a lot of them also speak, like, fucking German and shit, which is really weird, because German, people who live in Germany usually also know English, because that's part of their schooling, I know that from being in high school. Um, so I, I met some dude who just was really into me, who just almost only spoke German. He had trouble with English. And this guy and the previous guy before him <laughs> um, both just had a little bit of... They, their, their English was just... It needed a little bit of... Oh, I'm trying to be like SJW here and basically say it needed work, but like not, not like in a condescending way. Because he spoke fine. It's just we had to slow down a lot and there was a certain range of topics we could talk about but he actually was pretty solid on it um so i'm fighting a giant blue bowser i think i am going to lose this match incidentally bowser is very very hard to beat as ridley incidentally um 
primarily because he is so fucking big <laughs> um, that anything you do to fuck up means you're just going to eat giant fucking turtle claws in the face. I made a mistake there. So Bowser has super armor, which means that he can just eat through my jab combo and punish me. So I need to just use the three-hit combo instead of doing the longer one. But anyway. He spoke English okay. We couldn't talk about certain things because the language barrier. But um, that's just how things work with me. <laughs> um, you know, it just seems like uh, the people who are into me tend to be people who are for one not from this fucking country, which is also very fascinating to me. And maybe I'll talk about that a little bit more one day. I've had my own speculation as to why that is, but I mean, really, the actual thing is... I mean, I could just say it. It's just... <laughs> um, black people are just stigmatized in different ways in different countries, like... It's just one of those things you'll just, like, pick up on, honestly, like, if you're, um, black in a certain way <laughs> in the U.S., um, is that, like, when it's people from a different country, they're not gonna necessarily have the same stereotypes about you, you know what I'm saying? Like, they still exist, obviously, people, you know, a lot of people struggle with being nice to people who are fucking different from them, obviously, but if they're not in the U.S., they're not gonna have that same context to basically, like have stereotypes against people, you know what I'm saying? But oh well. That was a fun ramble off. He was cute. I might see him again. Um, we made out a little bit. That was pretty fun. And, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what else I'm going to um, talk about here. <laughs> Basically. I think that what I could talk about is I initially planned to go to a Super Smash Bros. tournament, but I ended up being too fucking tired when I woke up today. I think I talked about that in the last video. I was thinking about doing that, but it just ended up not being a thing. A little bit too sleepy. But I am going to practice a little bit more SSBU tonight, just so that I can uh, work on improving a bit more. The thing is, is that I can only really play on Wi-Fi. I don't have people um, to do... Um, local matches with and in fact this is I guess this is relating to gay stuff again you know I was talking to a dude on Grinder for a while who played Super Smash Bros and he was actually pretty good I'll have talked to two different guys one of them I can tell is just not into me honestly um, the other one I mean I guess he also wasn't into me because he goes to me XD but <laughs> um, the one I'm talking about the one who goes to me um, it was pretty neat to talk to you. He just had a lot of stuff going on in his life. Um, and I was very interested in playing with him in person, not just because he was very cute, but also because he was good, and I thought it would have been very useful practice, but... Such is the way of the world. I, um... I'm curious if I maybe came on a little bit too strong for him. I didn't... Well, I didn't even really, like, be like, hey, show me that hole, or, like... Actively be like, I want to super smash you. I was just, you know, letting him know I was interested in hanging up, hanging out. But oh well. My experience with playing Super Smash Bros. with other gays has been pretty complicated. Um, in that competitive gaming nerd culture in gay culture have a lot of overlap in terms of people being really fucking mean <laughs> and standoffish for no reason um, very consistently. Oh man, I just got fucked up. Danger twink. Um, so what I mean by that is that when I've encountered gay people who are into like competitive Smash or just people into competitive Smash in general, a lot of times they tend to be a little bit standoffish um, and they just kind of like start really basically you can just feel them like judging you and it's very similar to like <laughs> basically going to gay shit that you haven't been to before where people are just basically kind of sizing you up and being a little bit distant 
which is very fascinating. But when you combine the two together, when it's a homo that plays Super Smash Bros. or any other game competitively, they just, like, the tens the tensosity? We're going to go with that tensosity. Uh, is very much palpable. And people are just like, no eye contact, minimum words. Um, just let them know that you're not into them, you don't see their outfit, you're not about them, and then also your main is fucking garbage. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's just really what it's been like. Um, although I haven't met that many. Um, the guy that I was talking to on Grinder wasn't really like that. He was actually pretty nice. Um, which is probably a good sign um, that he wasn't into me. <laughs> I'm going to actually do a video on what I'm about to talk about later. Also, this Zero Suit Samus is going to get her feelings hurt. This is like a really, really bad matchup for Ridley. <laughs> Dude. She's doing well. It's just that like I've played against Zero Suit Samus enough to know what to do. Um, this is a bad matchup for Ridley, but I just I end up playing this pretty well and reading her pretty consistently. Even though I am getting the shit kicked out of me. The thing is, is that, like, she just has guaranteed follow-ups on a lot of stuff on Ridley, but, like, as long as you don't die, it's very easy for you to turn things, if that makes sense. Like that. Yeah, she got fucked up. Unfortunate for her, she's not a dragon. But anyway, what I was going to talk about is, a thing I've noticed is that if someone's, like, really friendly to me when we initially meet, that 100% means that they are probably not into me. <laughs> And it took me a long ass time to really realize this. And I just had like this really pensive moment um, about, actually was it last summer? It was either last summer or the summer before this um, because I was hanging out with Blankety Blank at his house. And I was like, it's really weird that he's starting to like talk to me a little bit more and like be interested in hanging out. And then I realized the reason why he's okay with that, because he's awkward and kind of avoids people he's attracted to, um, is because he's not into me. He, he decided he's not into me, so there's nothing to be awkward about because he just doesn't like me, if that makes sense. Do you get it? Like, he wouldn't talk to someone, he wouldn't be hanging out with someone he was actually into in this context because he would be, like, awkward about it. But he's not awkward with me because he's not into me. There we go. <laughs> Um, and I just, like, hurt my own feelings when I realized that. <laughs> and it made a lot of my interactions with other people make a lot more fucking sense. The reason why we can peacefully cohabitate when you very obviously avoid people you're not attracted to, or very obviously avoid people um, and are afraid of making the first move, is 100% because you're just not into me. And just galaxy brain moment, galaxy brain moment. Because if you were into me, I've seen how you act, and you would just be moody and pissy all the time, and then look for reasons not to interact with me. It just, it just... Very big galaxy brain moment. He's probably mad about that, incidentally. <laughs> I really love the idea of uh, Ridley grabbing Samus by her fucking ponytail when he uses Space Pirate Rush and just dragging her along the ground. Just the wig snatchery. Also, if you KO Samus with um, fucking Space Pirate Rush, she just holds on to the wig and she flies off into the background wigless. Well, he keeps the ponytail and puts it on himself. Honestly, something about Ridley with a ponytail just swishing around actually is, like, the most fashion thing I could ever think of. Like, I would love that if that was, like, an ending to Metroid, where, like, for your game over screen, it was just, like, Zero Suit Samus's body in the background with Widley. <laughs> I just said Widley, I'm screaming. With Ridley just wearing her fucking ponytail triumphantly. So I actually played against this person several times this night. Um, he is actually, he's pretty solid. It's just that I have more experience in this matchup, I think. And then also he has not realized that he needs to just constantly rope snake and he will beat the shit out of me. Ooh, he just got fucked up. 
Lucas is a pretty rough matchup, but he's ultimately like pretty low on the Satano meter of characters that I fucking hate playing against. Sorry, Lucas. Um, because he basically just doesn't have Ness's huge ass forward air that lasts like a million fucking seconds. <laughs> I mean, that really is, like, the main difference. His neutral air is solid, but it just doesn't have the size to zone me out of doing things. Because a lot of times, like, no matter where you are, basically, Ness can just basically throw a forward air out <laughs> and hit you from half across the planet. Because um, he carries so much momentum and the hitbox is so fucking big. It's just very frustrating. Oh, well. Luckily, I haven't against a Ness, which is actually why I'm looking like I'm doing so fucking well. Because the second I start playing against Nesses, I am going to end up making myself look fucking stupid 100%. He's just so irritating to play against, and he's... There really is just very little counterplay for him on Wi-Fi as Ridley. Like, you just really have to be perfectly shielding and knowing the exact frames to attack him out of a forward air. Oh man, that kid just got fucked up. But anyway, it's time for me to roll up out of here. <laughs> I forgot I've been talking too long. Anyway, I'll see you nerds later. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you listening. And uh, I'm Ethan Bongon, son. Peace.